there seems to be a undercurrent of agreement between what Mr. White, Mr. Patterson said, and others have said, even Mr. Fury. Because if the impression, you know, <laughs> uh, let's just say that Tim is a surprise to him. What I have heard is that there are points that have been raised that might might be uh, at the heart of conflict in making any decision, and that this is an opportunity to consider those points, the possible changes or clarifications, whatever they might be, and air them in a public forum, and clearly air them in a forum where the, the ramifications to other places on the key, for example, if there are changes in one PUD, does it affect my PUD where I live? That would be exposed. That would be important. Yeah, and certainly. It is to me, and it is for many people. But the point is, the opportunity for a debate to take place on, on the points that seem to be on contention, and that these are the, this is the clarification or the change or whatever that might be required to accomplish what's before us, and there is an opportunity to air that. Everybody, our ox should be looked at, and then no decision is made by the PNZ. They come back with their recommendation, and we will then have the benefit of that public debate on those issues. I think that's perfectly appropriate. It doesn't, it's not a dead end, it is helpful. Let, let, me, uh, let me follow up on that a little bit. We've both been sitting on Planning and Zoning Board and Commission for a number of years. The tentacles of these various 158, uh, what's my favorite here, 158, 102, L1, or whatever it was, the tentacles go so deeply into this that asking the Asking the PNZ or anybody else to follow the tentacles could end up being pretty much a review of the entire code. Could have. Could be. So why not just say it's a review of the code? And, and, and uh, just to, just to add the, to your perplexion, uh, <laughs> Mr. Furin said. It doesn't stop with the code, it goes to the heart of the comp plan. So if you're going to, if you're going to allow the attorneys to give us sort of uh, marching orders or suggestions on where we look, we're now back to the comp plan. No, no, definitely, because he has regularly said there's a problem with the comp plan. My point being, when we, if we send this back to the Planning and Zoning Board, we're really sending it all the way back to the comp plan. Yes, No, necessarily, George. I, 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 I say necessarily because it is the position of the IPOC attorneys, IPOC, that it starts with the comp plan. So if we're going to take Mr. Patterson's argument and Mr. Furin's argument <coughs> and bundle them together and send that back to the Planning and Zoning Board, we have sent, we are sending it back for a review of the comp plan before they can really start on zoning. I would, I would. I mean, are we only going to follow the club's attorneys? No, no. no so then Mr. Furin's got a voice, and God knows how many other attorneys from other groups have a voice. Go sure. back to the comp plan. I only say possibly, because clearly the club, through Mr. Patterson, has acknowledged there are parts of the zoning code that have been raised on both sides that are in case. <coughs> Step one, the, you know, Take the first step. Clarify those, if at all possible. Look at the ramifications of those. If you can get to that point where you have an understanding and get comfortable with what changes or modifications or interpretations are required, we then have that. 
In that context, this commission then could debate whether or not there's any further conflict. I don't see necessary you go back to Genesis in order to look at areas of conflict. Let me proceed uh, with that point. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Patterson brought up 158.009L1, which is a density issue. Yes. Mr. Mr. Furin brought up the comp plan and a density issue. I think we, and this is a shock, but I think we have Mr. Fearon and Mr. Patterson agreeing that density is an issue. <laughs> You're back to the comp plan. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm sir, I was, uh, I had my hand up first. <laughs> uh, okay. He always has his hand up. Uh, no, no, to be honest. <laughs> Speak. Um, if they're supposed to be impartial, then uh, this whole process to me has been the dance of the seven bells, and it's been a good one, by the way. Um, the key club has exposed through their a lot of money, a lot of work, has exposed flaws in our system, which we all agree needs to be addressed. I hope. I hope that all ends well for everyone, if that's possible, that we come out with something that is, makes the Key Club very prosperous, because I'm in favor of the Key Club being prosperous. But if we're going to be impartial, then what Mr. Seekman is saying, and to some degree what Mr. Spode is saying, <coughs> is that we can't exclude when we send this back, since it's been brought up. If we were to be impartial and we have, and there's credibility to what Mr. Spode, Mr. Seekman is saying, then we have to consider that as part of our, if we're going to pass it back, as part of our instruction. If it's credibly, there's a credible linkage, we cannot be the decider here tonight. You can't tell them what to do. No, but well, we can give them instructions. We were going to give them I don't think so. I can totally agree uh, with Mr. Seekman. We have the attorneys for the applicant. They have a bias. We have the attorneys for the opposition. They have a bias. We have a damn good zoning director, and she has a very good attorney. And they both say the comp plan is workable. And from the competent and, what are the words I have to use? Substantial. Substantial and competent testimony I've heard, they've convinced me, and I feel that they're right. Our comp plan is intentionally, intentionally vague. It works down the system with the codes. I've worked through many code changes in my time on the board, and I know others have. It's not an easy process, and I don't believe that just because we send this back to the Planning and Zoning Board, if we choose to, that we're necessarily going to get the answers that maybe the applicant is asking for or the opposition is asking. We don't know where it's going to go. I know that most of those code changes that we worked on, we did by committee, and it was amazing to me some of the things that came out of them. And so, I mean, I'm confident that if we do that, if we choose to do that, that we have a competent planning and zoning board with members who will take this as seriously as we do and that they will come back to us with what they think is the best answer for these questions and I think we should do it. <clears throat> and, and I don't think we have to open up the comp plan at this time and I think that it should be reviewed at some point but we have a, a regular review of it as it is. Uh, I. I'm not sure I can agree with you completely, and that's probably a shock. Uh, the, uh, the fact that there seems to be a conflict uh, with the comp plan on the density issue seems to raise, seems to raise it to the level of the comp plan. What, where is the conflict? And I, I, can't, I don't know if I can, we can go into this, but it seems to me that they're under that density.